also proud of, of our professor, uh, Stephanos Bibas, who will be a Third Circuit judge uh, starting soon. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, this is uh, an extremely rare and extremely uh, uh, auspicious event at Penn Law to have one of our uh, really valued faculty members uh, move on to the federal bench. Um, and uh, uh, so Professor Bebus will soon be Judge Bebus. Uh, he is always uh, going to be part of the Penn Law community. He and I have already started talking about ways to uh, bring you back to campus to teach. And uh, we, do, we do hope you're, and expect that you're, you're here uh, really for the rest of your long career. So you're moving uh, a few miles to the east, but you're, you're very much part of Penn Law, and we congratulate you so much. Um, let's have, so let's have a, another toast. I guess I should say the investiture will be in the spring down at the Third Circuit, and we'll, we'll do, throw another party here uh, at that point. But, uh, um, but here's to you. Congratulations. I'd invite you to say a couple words in a minute, but before we're, we're standing here, I'm looking at the goat over there behind, and we want you to uh, proudly take this part of Penn Law into your chambers. Uh, this is a full judge treatment here, so. Uh, I rate champagne in the middle of the workday. I'll get confirmed more often. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Ted and uh, Ruger, Dean Ruger, and Professor Yu and I go back. It was 20 years ago, two beards and a few pounds ago, uh, that we were all clerking at the court together. And I, I have to say that outpouring of support around Penn makes me proud to be a part of Penn Law. And I think. The things that, that Penn embodies, the, the, the commitment to the rule of law, to holding a society of diverse ideological perspectives and backgrounds together and uniting us and navigating our differences together and, and using the law to, to really make us e pluribus unum is something I very much want to take to the bench. It is one of the lessons I've absorbed here, this family where across the political spectrum, students of all different types, faculty members, have come out of the woodwork. I, I don't know if you know, I'm not a very political person, and I, and I, I didn't know any of these people, and the, the number of people at Penn who helped me, advised me, guided me through this bewildering process, and served as models, role models, people who've taught me. I don't think anyone is born a judge. I don't think wisdom is intelligence. I think these are things you grow into. You grow into by making a series of hard judgment calls. You grow into through trial and error and making some mistakes. You learn a craft by doing things alongside people who are wiser but, but humble enough to, to, to learn and gracious enough to invest in the people around them. As you all know, this is a time in our society it's somewhat dark. There's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of people who are hurt. They're angry, they're scared, they're politically polarized. And some of that has seeped into this law school that I love. And it's grieved me, and it's grieved all of you. And understandably, I've kept my head down. I've gotten lots of phone calls from reporters and just keep hanging them up. Uh, <laughs> but I do think that one of the things that I've written about in my scholarship has been using the law not just as a, as a, as a tool for a zero-sum victory, but as a way for people to, to, to reconcile, to apologize, to forgive, and to heal. Maybe it's idealistic to hope, but I do hope that our country will put aside the suspicion of the worst in one another and come back to the best. And that this law school that I love, where people are understandably hurt, angry, scared, wounded, will get past whom to blame and focus again on the common humanity we share, the common commitment to the rule of law and to training the next generation of law students to uphold our precious liberties and our commitment to reasoned, peaceful disagreement, even with people whose views we strongly object to or even find offensive, but not taking it personally. 
And so if there's a legacy, I, and I, I don't want, maybe talking a legacy is too pompous. I'm not disappearing. I'm going to come back and continue teaching and have the permission of the dean. But if there's something I could ask from all of you, in addition to your, your prayers and your best wishes and your guidance, which I will continue to welcome, it's that we all forgive and we all come back together as the big family of Penwall that I've known, that I've valued, and that I will be honored to maintain close and cordial ties with. To Penwall. Yeah. Yeah.